Hey everyone, Jared VK3BL here, and um, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about a project that we're going to be working on um, here together at Rate My Radio. And um, as we work through it, we'll be recording videos about the the repair. It's um, it's a project amplifier, and I'm sharing it with you guys. And I want you, you know, every step of the way, I want you to tell me what you think, what you do to the amplifier in the comments. Um, uh, whether you think I'm doing anything silly, whether you know about a particular tip for this amplifier, all those sort of things. Um, I want your feedback and assistance. As far as I'm concerned, this is a community build. We're restoring an amplifier. It's a very simple tube amplifier. And um, yeah, I just wanted to, to share that with you. But so before, uh, before I try and get a few, um, uh, well, a bit of a look over with the camera, um, I just wanted to sort of mention that I, I'm a bit of a tube tube guy. I know everything here is sort of solid state and doing its its, its own thing, but um, you know, um, I, I flirted with the 4CX um, 250B once in a Tokyo high power amp. Um, I can't say I'm particularly fond of uh, that tube, but um, you know, you've got to you've got to admire the modern ceramic tube, 250 watts. Um, but I've always loved um, glass envelope tubes. So I used to have an AL572 um, amplifier, which used the quad of these 572 tubes. Um, but, you know, if you read a little bit about the 572, you realize that the, the design isn't that optimal. The lead lengths are longer than they sort of need to be. And, um, you know, it's not, not a very good RF tube. Um, and, and while it does work for, you know, up to about 28 megahertz, um, you could probably squeeze it into six. I think some, some wizards can get them to work on six meters. You know, it's not, not a great tube, really. Um, they're only made in China now. Most glass envelope tubes, unfortunately, are. Um, but that said, 160 watts of plate dissipation. They're pretty rugged. They're pretty hard to kill. They're a heck of a lot better than 811 tubes. If you've got an amp with 811 um, tubes in it, um, the best advice I can give you is to chuck in some 572Bs. Um, uh, one author states that they're um, exactly the same grid and filament. Um, it only takes a look at two of the tubes to show that the grid and filament um, are slightly beefier in the 572. And they do seem to last longer, plus you won't kill them from mistuning. Anyway, enough of that tube. I have finally, or we have finally, got our hands on an amp that uses my all-time favorite tube. And it's the first time I've ever owned an amplifier um, that has this tube in it. This is the 3500Z, or Z, as we'd say in Australia. This is an Amperex version, and um, it's the date code on it is 9735, which is pretty much the date codes that RF parts were advertising before they ran out of stock of the Amperex. So I think I haven't powered it on, I haven't tested it, but from what I can tell, um, you know, this tube is really clear. Um, it's, it's a goer and I'm, you know, I'm really happy because, you know, it, you can't get, um, you just can't get new old stock Amperex tubes, you know, made in France, quality 3500 um, ZGs anymore. You can get Chinese made ones once again. Um, I know there's some problems with RF parts and uh, the, I guess, the trade war or the, the Chinese embargo in the States at the moment. Um, in general, you can't get 3500 Zs in Australia full stop. So <laughs> um, for some reason, the Chinese don't seem to list them on eBay. I don't know why, but um, uh, yeah, I'm, it, uh, I'm, look, I'm really, really quite happy to have this tube, I suppose, to have a, a nice quality um, Amperex tube and with the graphite plates and that's going to look really beautiful glowing. So um, that's basically the story. Uh, an amp came along, it needs some work and um, I thought, well, why don't we get it? We'll work on it together on the channel and I'll finally get to have a tube amp with my very favourite tube, um, the 3500Z. Um, I say favourite tube because it's a glass envelope. I look I know the ceramic tubes, the big ones, they can put out tens of trillions of millions of kilowatts. There's one the size of a baby. 
Um, look up the X2159 tube if you've never seen it. Um, 1.5 megawatts plate dissipation. That's a pretty decent tube. Um, but, you know, when I first looked up transmitting tubes as a kid, um, which was not that long ago for me, I suppose, compared to some people, um, this was the tube that I saw. So I've always thought, you know, that is a beautiful tube. I want to own an amplifier where I can see that glow. And um, I finally found one. It does need some work, but we're going to do it together. It's going to be a lot of fun. So anyway, without uh, any further ado, let me see if I can position the camera and get some shots of the amplifier. Okay, if we go right down and have a look, I guess, to begin with, we can see we've got a Heathkit uh, SB1000 linear amplifier. And this is basically an Ameritron AL80A amplifier. So very similar to the AL80B. Um, AL80B was an update uh, that uses more printed circuit boards, a little bit more refined, but uh, still a very good design, the AL80A, and same with the Heathkit SB1000. Um, plus, um, being a Heath kit, there's a full instruction manual available for it, and being an Ameritron, every part is still available as well, or a good substitute. So it's a perfect project amplifier. Um, you can get, as, as I said, you can get the instructions to build it from woe to go, and you can also get all the parts still. So that's a, a pretty, pretty good find, and uh, something I think we're going to enjoy working on. So let's see if I can just go back up, and we'll have a look at what's inside. A bit hard to get a good view here, but no time like the present to put the tube back in. So, tube goes in like this. Nice thing about the um, AL80A and the AL um, and the Heathkit SB1000 is you've got a nice ceramic socket there. Um, the not so nice thing is you don't have your plate choke here. Um, now this is not turned on. Your plate choke here uh, isn't that great for the wark bands. It doesn't have the nice spacings, but you can get the modern plate choke from the AL80B bolted in place and um, get better wark band performance. So the main issue with this amplifier is over here. Now, we're missing a padding capacitor there. Um, it's been blown to shreds, it's got a big hole in it. And all the band switch wafers um, are completely destroyed. Oh, sorry, all the band switch contacts on this wafer are completely, they're vaporized, they're gone. I've never seen anything like it. Um, so the band switch is going to need to be replaced as a minimum. That capacitor is going to be need to be replaced. There is a little choke in here, which um, I'm not really happy. Um, there seems to be a little, little bit of lit wire coming off that, so I'm a bit worried about that. So I think that'll get replaced too. And um, this coax cable, which is your input, has you can't probably can't see it on the camera, but it's been singed. Um, and it's also a little short. Uh, I've seen some other builds of this amplifier and I've actually had them come around up here. So we might reroute that coax as well. Um, that said, aside from the pain of desoldering your, um, your coils here, your um, inductors, uh, it's not gonna be that bad. So just a quick overview of what you've got here. You've got your um, plate tuning capacitor, your load tuning capacitor down here, and your um, fixed inductors are there for your different bands. Um, the more turns you have, the, uh, the lower the band. So, you know, that's probably all things being equal, maybe the tap for 10 or 15, then you, you know, when you start getting down low, you start using this coil. And I think you've even got that for 160, but I could be wrong. Let's flick round to the other side. And this is where, excuse my poor chair here, it's not very good quality. 
This is where you start getting um, quite simple. Um, at first, you kind of think, oh, this is a bit scary. Everything is bolted to the steel chassis, but it is all nicely spaced. The, pre the person who built it seems to have done a, a good job. And um, basically, I think we're just going to give it a bit of a tidy up. Now, I'm tempted to replace the capacitors. I don't know how old they are. It hasn't been fired up in a year. And I'd hate for one of those to turn the inside of this thing into basically... Um, well, I don't want it to look like a chicken's exploded on the inside. So, um, that's, and that's what would happen if one of them let go. So I think I'll probably replace those. Um, we'll check all of the rectifier board here. We'll check and we might even replace just out of due course. It doesn't seem to be um, any gap left there. They probably, the constructor probably should have left a little bit of a gap on those equalization resistors. So we want to check them too. They're, they're what cause the caps to go bad. Well, one of the reasons the caps can go bang. So we'll definitely check those, we'll check those, but this all comes apart nicely. Um, we'll check the relay, make sure that's switching nicely, give it a clean if needed. I might even put in some new SO239 sockets. These ones seem to have uh, worn away. So anyway, that's the project. Um, I'll get more of a bench set up, well, I'll get a proper bench set up uh, in the future and we'll work on it together. I'll talk about what we're doing. Let me know what you're interested in um, in the comments. If there's some aspect of the amplifier you want a uh, better explanation of or um, some of the theory about how it works or anything like that, just ask in the comments. Um, and if you've got suggestions for capacitors or you want to give me some, <laughs> <laughs> donations are welcome um you can contact uh, us on facebook or in the comments as well anyway this is jared vk3bl saying 73 and talk to you all soon and uh work on the amplifier soon cheers bye